Hi guys, it's Theta Blackwood and I am here today because a lot of y'all are at home during this pandemic and you are uh, cleaning, organizing, straightening out, just wanting to um, generally uh, have something to do during this pandemic. So um, you might be going through your jewelry box as well and I just wanted to give you an idea of some things that you can do to help um, kind of do that. So let me share my screen. Okay, so I'm gonna to talk to you today about jewelry, cleaning, um, metal, stone, storage, and styles. So let me see if I can get this thing going here. Okay, so the metals, uh, when you're cleaning your different metals and stones, um, it really does make a difference whether they are solid metals, like solid sterling, 925 sterling, whether they're plated, um, even sterling can be plated with rhodium, um, Sterling can be plated with gold, um, brass, solid brass, um, although it looks like gold can be plated as well with rhodium or gold. Um, stones, uh, semi-precious stones, uh, like quartz and um, tanzanite and um, citrine, et cetera, um, are different than pearls. So I'm gonna just tell you one other thing. Pearls are, um, just something to, to think about is if you go through your jewelry box and you're trying to determine what's real pearl, what's not a real pearl, um, a real pearl is gritty like sand. So if you rub the pearl on your tooth, just like on the front of your tooth, it's going to feel like sand. If it's a fake pearl or a man, man I guess a manufactured pearl, um, it is going to feel really, really smooth and glassy, um, plasticky, whatever, on your tooth. So um, that's just a good way to um, sort of evaluate what's in your jewelry box. Okay, let's see if I can get this to go forward. Here we go. Okay, so when you're, a couple of different ways to um, clean your jewelry, you can use treated or untreated polishing cloths. So the treated ones are like this sunshine yellow cloth that um, I bought on Amazon. Those are treated with something that's like a jewelry cleaner. Um, when you use it a lot, it's gonna get black as dirt and it still works when it's black. Okay, your fingers are gonna get black too, just from all the um, oxidation of the metal. But um, this sunshine cloth will clean solid brass and solid silver and copper, all the solid metals, just perfectly. Um, the problem with using that on, um, I guess, plated metals is that it can take the plating off. So you just have to be a little bit careful about that. Um, untreated cloths are just really a soft cloth and they work best for plated metals. So. Um, if you don't know uh, what your jewelry is made of, and, and if you have purchased it from me, just ask me because I'd love to help you make sure that your jewelry looks wonderful for years and years to come. Now, liquid jewelry cleaners, like the silver cleaner below, um, it also, on Amazon, can come with the um, little soft polishing cloth. But liquid jewelry cleaners, like silver uh, cleaners, can actually damage your pearls. Pearls are very soft and porous, and they really um, just need um, you know, a soft cloth, if anything. And your pearls do need to be worn. They really need your body oils. So make sure that if you haven't worn your pearls, if you have some, to just wear them every now and then, um, maybe once a quarter or something. They just need those body oils to um, keep the pearl lust lustered and, and beautiful. Otherwise they end up drying out and um, they sort of disintegrate. So um, the other thing that you will want to do is just um, consider using soap and water. If you don't know what your um, jewelry is made out of, uh, soap and water, you know, you've got body oils, you've got um, sweat, you've got um, perfumes, etc., cetera, um, that can affect your jewelry and how it looks. So soap and water, just a Dawn or Sunlight dish soap and water, warm water works great if you don't know what it's made of. And then just clean it and dry it really good. One of the things that um, you know you have to remember is, is that if you have your jewelry out, um, it's going to oxidize. Like sterling will tarnish, um, brass will tarnish, um, even gold um, can can sort of look a little different on your skin. But anyway, it's just really good to get the, the body oils off and to clean your jewelry um, 
you know, kind of as you need. Um, but we're gonna talk about how to store it so that you don't have to clean it all the time. Hang on a second as I try to get this uh, next slide. Okay, so here's something that you can do is you can basically pull out everything you have. Um, pull out all your jewelry. If you're in an organizational mode, um, just organize it. So you might have costume in one pile, stuff that you might, I consider this stuff like Charming Charlie's, although they went out of business. Um, most of your just fashion jewelry is costume. You got designer, like what I have sold. Um, it is usually sort of bridges the gap between costume and fine. It's still fashionable, but it's made well. It's made with real metals and semi-precious gemstones, etc. cetera. Um, versus fine, that's your diamond, your gold, um, you know, your platinum, et cetera. So, you know, organize it. Now, um, again, if you don't know what, a, uh, you know, just from when you're looking at your jewelry, again, the pearl thing, um, use that little tip that I gave you as far as um, rubbing it on your tooth to see if you've got real pearls versus not. Um, now, what I've done, so if you go through your jewelry and there's like this pile of stuff that does not bring you joy and you cannot see yourself wearing it ever, ever again, donate it, get rid of it, put it in a box, send it to the thrift store as soon as you can do that. Um, Ziploc bags are great to protect your jewelry. So once you've cleaned it and once it looks great, um, you can order on Amazon small little Ziploc bags, kind of like this, um, and you can store your jewelry in there. Um, that keeps the air out of it, it keeps it protected. And depending on how much you have will determine how you store it. Um, you know, storing it in Ziploc bags in a, in a jewelry box on your dresser is great. Um, if you have a lot of it, then you might wanna consider hanging bags or jewelry box. So I'm gonna show you a couple of my favorites. Um, this is a great way to store a lot of jewelry. Um, the hanging storage that you can hang in your closet, it takes up very minimal space and it's all where you can see it. So you don't have just piles and piles of jewelry in a jewelry box. Um, you can see, you could have all your gold on one side, all your silver on the other. Um, you could have, depending on how much you have, you can have several of these and they'll all just take up a little bit of space and you could have all the necklaces, all the earrings, all the bracelets, etc. So, or just collections together. If you are actually uh, storing things in Ziploc bags, if there's an earring to match or a bracelet to match, just store them all in one pocket. Um, I like the ones that have the zippers because things don't fall out. So if you happen to spill this on the floor, it's gonna keep everything sort of neat and tidy. For travel, I like this company called Person. Um, it looks like a little lunch box. It's a fabric kind of zipper thing. It even has an expandable, you know, like a luggage has the expandable zipper um, in case it needs to be a little thicker. But when you open it up, there's all these little zippered pockets and that is just fabulous for um, travel. If you don't have a lot to travel with, then you can use a jewelry roll, it's a little smaller. Um, but Person does have um, a lot of different sizes of travel cases. so. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty helpful. Okay, so some styles of necklaces and um, jewelry, et cetera. So uh, there's pendant necklaces that, that usually provides a focal point. So if you have like anything that falls in like a little V, whether it's um, a delicate necklace near your uh, neck or it's a long necklace, um, provides a focal point. Um, and those are fabulous for women who um, are a little bit, let's see, how do I say this? A little more full on top <laughs> um, because it allows your eye to be drawn down and doesn't create a slinging effect. Um, if you have an endless necklace, this might be a long necklace that, um, again, for people that are a little, uh, I'll just, say full on top, um, it allows, um, you know, well actually endless is better for, I guess, a, a little less full on top kind of figure. Um, you won't have those slinging effects um, and accentuating uh, there. Depends on your outfit. So the other thing too that I've noticed is sometimes people wear long necklaces and they fall between the valley. Um, the best thing to do there is to wear a cami underneath a blouse, like a thin blouse, so that you don't have that little valley thing happening. Um, 
Endless necklaces are also really fabulous for um, women who have arthritis or older people who just don't want to deal with little clasps. So that is good when you're thinking about gifts for um, gifts for people. Oops. Okay. Uh oh. Um, bracelets. So you again, you'll have the stretch bracelets, which are great again for people who don't have um, as much dexterity in their hands. Uh, the clasp bracelets tend to be a little higher quality, a little like higher end uh, kind of thing. And then your cuff is like a real statement usually. Um, now some cuffs, and they are you know they're usually open on one side. You you put them on. I don't have one to show you, or no, I don't. Yes, I do. Hang on. So if you have a cuff like this, okay, see how it's open on one side? The best way to put that on is to put it on the skinny part of your wrist and then twist it and get it on like that. So that's why you do it. Instead of like, you don't want to take a cuff and pull it and, um, and keep stretching and opening and closing the uh, cuff because by opening and closing and stretching it, you're going to bend this metal and you're going to end up breaking your cuff. Uh, the other thing is, is depending on the size of your wrist, sometimes if you have a thinner wrist, a thicker cuff will look beautiful. If you have a thicker wrist, um, sometimes a small cuff, a daintier cuff actually looks better because you don't want to have, um, I mean, you just want to, it's, it's a balance. Okay. That's all I can say. And you, you can figure out how, um, you feel in those. Okay. Earrings. So studs tend to be just like, you know, obviously a stud, but it is best with large statement necklaces. So if you have a big old statement necklace, you might want to go minimalistic on the earring. You don't want to have earrings fighting with necklaces and stuff. It's all at your head. Um, you don't want to have it all fighting with each other. So, um, and then there's dangling earrings, which can be small dangles or larger, depending on, um, again, better with thinner necklaces, in general, just because um, unless it's a delicate dangle with a, a little bit chunkier um, necklace. And then hoops, depending on the size, can be minimalistic by having a small hoop or a big statement earring like I'm wearing right now. And I did a statement earring because I'm just wearing a delicate necklace. So um, again, think about your poster ear wires and what they're made of because um, the, the typical thing that you hear of with allergies is actually just nickel. So if the post has nickel in it and it tends to be your cheaper uh, earrings, they would cause irritation. Um, stainless steel, gold, or silver ear wires should not cause irritation. So, okay. Oops. Let me keep going here. Sorry about that. And then finally, uh, I've got to get this thing going here. So jewelry is something for everyone. Now, during this pandemic, um, it is not a need, a necessity. I get that, but it does commemorate an event. And you've got people um, celebrating generation or um, graduations, birthdays, uh, wedding anniversaries, etc. So it is something that commemorates an event, and it is pretty cool to be able to gift um, a piece of jewelry to someone and have them think of you every time they wear it. Um, Jewelry always fits, unless it's a ring that sometimes shrinks when you get older. I don't know why, um, but uh, jewelry does always fit. And it can be gifted so that every time someone wears it, they think of you. Um, it can be passed down for generations. So I'll, just as a side note, you know, when my mom passed away six years ago, I couldn't wear her clothes, didn't want to wear her clothes, didn't want to wear her shoes. Um, but I could wear her jewelry. And um, I went through her jewelry box and picked out some pieces that I wanted to keep uh, that were good and that, I, you know, that I would wear. And I can wear her jewelry for generations. And it's just awesome um, to be able to wear something that belongs to a relative or somebody that means a lot to you. Um, so finally, Okay, so yes, Jewelry by Sarah Blaine is closing its direct sales division May 30. Actually, I guess it's May 31st. I think May goes to 31st. Anyway, um, so I just wanted to put a note out there to please shop my sample sale um, until all my inventory is depleted. Um, I'll be adding to my sample sale every week. And since we have to do everything virtually now, um, I've 
provided a link and I'll provide a link um, in this as well that you can just pop on my link and I'll be adding items to it weekly um, so that you can still shop for things as long as I can be in business. And then um, until the end of month, uh, you can also shop my website um, for some really awesome deals. So thank you so much for um, taking the time to listen and I hope you have a great week, Mother's Day, May, etc. Okay, bye-bye.